Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. You've probably heard of the Midwest Old Threshers Reunion held each year on Labor Day weekend in Mount Pleasant, Iowa. With over 2,000 exhibits and attractions, it's one of the biggest events of its kind with vintage tractors, hit and miss engines, draft horses, threshing machines, and of course, steam engines. There are also craft vendors, entertainment tents, and a wide variety of home-cooked food. The event runs for five days, beginning the Thursday before the holiday weekend and ending on Labor Day. What you might not know is the Reunion Grounds is home to a number of museums that contain carefully displayed exhibits covering rural life during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Old Thresher's CEO, Terry McWilliams, took us on a tour of the museums that cover such topics as electricity arriving on the farm, rural telephone service, getting water to livestock, and the often overlooked contributions of women in the day-to-day -day operations of American farms. And of course, there's tractors, steam engines, and other farm implements. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Some of these are owned by Midwest Old Threshers and a lot of them are owned by individuals. It's too expensive to haul them down the road anymore, you know, right. so they leave them here to help make our museum throughout the year. We do have the, uh, there's an electric exhibit, um, a phone exhibit, um, there is also a, a jewelry shop and camera display, a barber shop and a wood carving exhibit uh, that uh, is here for folks as they come through our little makeshift walkway here. Uh, do most of the people that come through the museum coming during the event or throughout the summer? We have, well, it, through the summer months we get lots of visitors. Uh, during the event, obviously, this building's emptied. Uh, all the traction steam engines and antique tractors are out on the grounds working, because that's one thing about here. Uh, everything still works, and we take it out and play with it. Uh, so, uh, you know, true museums you can't touch, you know, that type of thing. You know, these things all still come to life and get to play with them, so that's a fun thing. Uh, we use this during our steam schools and then it's out on the grounds and they have talks every day during the reunion so people understand how a steam engine works. There's another version of that over in the uh, interpretive display in the other building. Um, this is just a sampling each year. These rotate around these tractors that stay. Um, uh, folks leave them, you know, here uh, so that's part of our exhibit and museum throughout the year. Yeah, there is. That's a uh, line drive tractor. Uh. <laughs> I didn't understand what you meant at first. Okay, yeah. so it doesn't have a steering wheel. You're nope. pulling on the lines as if you have team horse. Exactly, and yeah. uh, so does not uh, does not maneuver real easy. Let's just yeah. put it that way. 
but an uh, example of stationary steam engines and there's a whole bunch more on this side of uh, things that behind that red wall back there's a giant boiler system that runs all these during the event. So these would be machines that would be working in industry yep. or in public works? Yep. Um, the big one back here used to run a water plant. Yeah. So, and then we've got lots of folks that, uh, you know, take pride in coming and volunteering for our association and they work on these and they keep them going and, they, you know, they kind of adopt it, you should say. And uh, they're proud to stand there and answer questions as people watch it run during our event. All of these, like I said, do operate and run. They come to life for about 14 days a year and then they get cleaned out and put back and they're on exhibit. Um, a lot of these belong to families that uh, leave them here so we can have it for the museum. Uh, Old Thresher owns a few. Um, but uh, you talk about amazing things to figure out somebody to make and create. And, uh, but it is fun during our event to watch all these things come to life and move, move around the grounds. So this is the Museum B for the Heritage Museum, the Richard E. Etkin Heritage Museums. Uh, and this, is, uh, this area was dedicated as the Linus Moore uh, exhibit hall because he designed and built all these interpretive displays over his tenure as the CEO here at Old Threshers. Uh, and so we uh, house uh, some of our friends at Midwest Central Railroad, their trains and things in here for people to see over the winter months as well. But uh, then we have all the great permanent uh, interpretive exhibits. Uh, starting here with the, our farmhouse and so gives a, a picture of an old farmhouse and and, uh, and for us we have a school tour program we bring fourth fifth and sixth grade kids here in the spring about a thousand every spring and uh, it's interesting the questions that they ask when they see this type of stuff uh, and they have some good questions actually it's always pretty amazing yeah yeah this is terrific it brings it to life it's one thing to read stories and have people lecture about it, but it's another to actually see it. With our volunteers and our school tour program, you know, obviously we use things that we tailor to the kids so they can kind of relate and ask questions. Obviously they all they all know that's a phone, but they all didn't realize that you could all listen to, you know, everybody's phone conversations, party, line. party lines and you know, that, that blue thing up there on the top is a vacuum cleaner and uh, you know, and, and the bedpan over here underneath the bed in the attic is, you know, always well, what's the white thing, you know, those type of questions. Sure, um, sure. But, uh, all right, next one here is the women partners on the land. And uh, I go through this exhibit, I'm not sure who worked harder on the farm, right. <laughs> if it was the men or the women. How long has the reunion been going on? The first reunion was in 1950. Okay. So we've, uh, last year with, uh, the, with the COVID in, in 2020, that would have been the 70th. And so makes it for a challenge, but we're just excited because we're moving forward and going to be having the 2021, so. Isn't it interesting that in 1950, 
um, there was a, uh, an interest in preserving heritage that when we look back now in 2020, 1950 is a time of heritage, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yep. It's, it's, really, um, it's really fascinating that, that there was that kind of vision back then to try to preserve and display this. Yeah, in the, I think it was 48, 49, there were some gentlemen here that went to another show in Illinois, in Pontiac, Illinois, and uh, they went to a steam show and they came back and they're like, well, we have lots of that in Henry County. And one year later, they were having the first Old Threshers reunion, and on their flyers, they actually called it the annual Old Threshers reunion right off the bat. Um, and a lot of the folks were still using it, so they brought it in off the farm, um, had it on display in, in the grounds. And uh, for me, the interesting, when you look back at the old photos from the early 50s, uh, everybody came dressed up. The, the guys were in, you know, pants and tie and shirt, and the women were in dresses, and, and, and you know, and, and they're looking at stuff that they know their neighbors are still using, and, you know, 70 right. years later, you know, we're still used, trying to use it here during the reunion. Right, right, right. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. This is our antique car and truck um, display, and it has a service station. Uh, it has some over-the-road trucking example stuff here, um, and then there's a firehouse over there with our stuff. Um, Lennis Moore had started to design this before he passed away, and he left this one in my hands. So I guess you're saying this is kind of my first and only <laughs> exhibit uh, with Lennis's guidance. Uh, the mural on the wall behind that is today's semi-size versus this 1919 service truck, which made trips back and forth to Chicago. So talk about a little difference in over-the-road trucking. <laughs> right. But this one is dedicated to showing off our antique cars and trucks um, and, you know, and the service factor of the service station and the old gas pumps and, and bringing that aspect of the reunion into our museums. Yes, I think they were. And that truck has a, is a tie to a company in Burlington, which is the signs back here with the Ardlich Transfer Company um, out of Burlington. And uh, there's the picture of the truck with Mr. Ardlich in it. firehouse exhibit here. We used to have a firehouse building uh, up in our North Village and it just got to the point where it wasn't safe. Uh, and so we had artifacts and things that we restored uh, and added into this exhibit. So this whole exhibit basically is called the influence on transportation and safety in rural, rural life. And so uh, and then we acquired the fire truck and, uh, and of some other things. But uh, our, our little exhibit to the rural fire departments and, and uh,
Uh, this one is when the electricity uh, comes to the farm exhibit, uh, showing some some of the first electrical items and uh, and such. And the kids have a hard time believing that the picture there of the two listening to the radio was you know something to do, uh, but uh, they have uh, you know. The battery packs in the basement were big, and you know, they had to re store up the energy. This uh, piece right here, actually, this is deep freeze. We acquired about five years ago. The gentleman was still using it. It's actually a freezer. Uh, and he was still, still had it on the farm and was using it as a freezer. I mean, so I could plug it in today and we'd keep something cold. How about that? Yeah. Sent me a picture of it and I wanted to know if I w we were interested. And I went, uh, so first I was like, well, I didn't know what it is until I had right. to explain it, you know, uh, right, type right. of thing. Yeah, I've never seen one like yeah. that before. That's great. Yep. One of the things that in this area that uh, I have fun with the kids on the tours is is here on the wall there are four posters um, of a Tumwa poultry show in Tumwa, Iowa. And I ask the kids what's wrong with these posters as they all stare at them and, and look. Um, and so you got these little kids trying to figure it out. Not sure once I tell them the, what the problem is, is how many of them want to go to a chicken show on Christmas? Because it's over December 22 through 25 in 1914, and they're all like, no, nah. you know, they, they have fun with that, but they laugh that you could go to a chicken show on Christmas. That is funny. Yeah. That's a nice barbed wire display. Well, welcome to the to the barn. Obviously, <laughs> a little of everything's in the barn. So if you're going to have a steam display, then you got to bring in a full-size engine. You got to belt it up to a full-size separator, and uh, have a water tank. and the water tank and the whole shoot and match. Yeah. And so even with the idea that you're out in the wheat field, got the wagon and the gentleman up on top with the forks, somebody on top of the separator, and uh, a way to go. But the pile is slow. Yeah. <laughs> this exhibit also is loaded with photographs of showing how uh, the traction steam engines worked all over the Midwest in the farms and the towns. Um, some of my favorite ones are uh, there's, they're moving houses, they're pulling houses down the street. <laughs>
So this is where I stand all the time when I walk through because, you know, I, I get lost on which pulley is attached to which wheel, which is spinning, which gear, which is moved to that one, to that one. Um, but uh, This is the biggest wooden thrusting machine I've ever seen, I think. It is big. My dad bought one at auction. I grew up on a draft horse farm. And my dad bought one at auction because there was a guy that was from the scrap metal um, company that was just buying it for scrap. And my dad didn't want to see it go. So we hauled it home. And it, was, it wasn't wood, it was a gal that gal mm -hmm. that steel. And uh, it took us forever to get it to work, but we finally did. We didn't grow um, grain, but we just wanted to make it work, and we did. And it is a complicated machine. Yes, they are. And once it starts going wrong, you gotta stop. <laughs> it can rattle itself to death. Yeah. So here's some of my favorite foot. I mean, they're moving a building down the middle of the street, another house there. Uh, they moved a lot of houses and buildings back in the, the day. We're at the uh, water exhibit uh, talking about uh, bringing uh, the, with the windmills and pumping the water. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD-TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.